Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be continuing to program GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi. For the first tutorial in this series, you can click on the link above. In this session, we'll use buttons, LEDs, and buzzers. We'll have three examples. In the first one, we'll print something on the terminal when the button is pressed. In the second one, we'll control an LED with the button. And in the last example, we'll control a buzzer. So let's not waste time and connect to our Raspberry Pi. I'm using Putty for connecting to the Raspberry Pi via SSH, so I'm entering the username as Pi, the password, and I'm connected. And I'm going to change directory to the Python examples that I created. And in that one, I'm going to change directory to GPIO. And I've already prepared the first file, it's button.py. So let's see its content. Okay, in this one, we are importing the button function from GPIO0. And we are connecting the button to the GPIO2 pin. In the breadboard, you are going to see which GPIO pin corresponds to 2. And we are creating an infinite loop with while true. And we are saying that when the button is pressed, we are going to print button is pressed. Otherwise, we are going to print button is not pressed. So let's see how it works. So since the button is not pressed, we see on the screen saying that the button is not pressed. So when we press on it, you can see that we see button is pressed. When I release it, it says again, button is not pressed and so on. So let's exit from the script. So now let's do another example with the button. So let's open button2.py file. Okay, in this one we are importing pause from signal and we are defining a function named say hello, which is going to print hello on the terminal. And we are again defining the button on the GPIO port 2 and we are calling button when pressed call the function say hello here you should pay attention that we are not putting brackets after say hello otherwise nothing is going to happen when the button is pressed and then we are using the pause function in order to not to quit from the script so let's get out from the script and run it Here we can see that we've missed something, so let's modify our code. So we've forgotten to include the button. I'm going to insert a line here, and I'm going to say from GPIO 0 import button. And I'm going to save it. So let's try to run it once again. Okay. Now let's press the button. It says hello. When I press again, it does it again. Okay, let's quit from the script again. Okay, so now let's have another example. Let's create another file. For example, let's name it button button.led.py and let's write down 
from GPIO zero imports button and LED. And again, let's import pause from signal. Let's keep our first definition for the LED. LED is equal to LED GPIO 17 button is at button GPIO 2 and when the button is pressed we're going to turn on the LED when it's released it's going to be off We are going to use the pause function in order to keep the script alive. So let's write this one. Okay. Okay, let's see if it works. Let's write Python 3. Button LED.py. Okay. Let's press the button. And you can see that the LED is on when I press it and I release it, it's off. So our script is working. Now let's do another example. And in this example, we are going to show how to control the PWM LED with the button. So let's open this file. Okay, in the first line, you can see that we are importing pause from signal in order to keep the script alive. And we are importing PWM LED and button from GPIO0. Now first, we are going to define our duty cycle as 0 0.1. And we are going to show that our LED is connected to GPIO port 17. And then we are going to say that our button is connected at GPIO2. And here we are assigning the duty cycles 0 0.1 value as the LED value. So our LED is going to be lit, but at a very minimum level. Okay. Then we are defining this increase duty cycle function. And we are defining the duty underscore cycle as the global variable. And we need to make a check here because we are going to increment this value with each button press. And if you have a value which is bigger than one, then our code is going to give an error. So that's why we make this check here because our duty cycle is going to double itself. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 0 0.8. So we are going to assign 0 0.1 to it once again when it reaches 0 0.8. And after checking that condition, we are doubling the duty cycle and we are assigning this duty cycle as the LED value. And this is the function that we call when the button is pressed. So let's see how it works. Okay, now you can see that the LED is on with a very small duty cycle and I'm pressing so it is now 0 0.2 now it's 0 0.4 now it's 0 0.8 and it's going to go back to 0 0.1 again once I press the button yeah so it's in a cycle Okay, now, and in our last example, we are going to control a buzzer with a button. So let's see our Pi file. Okay, 
you can see that we are importing buzzer and button from GPIO0 and again importing pause from signal. We are defining the buzzer at GPIO17 in the place where our LED was before and our button is again at GPIO2 and we are saying that when the button is pressed the buzzer is going to be on when it's released the buzzer is going to be off and our script is going to run forever with the pause function so let's quit the script and run it okay so when I press on the button the buzzer is going to make a sound as you can hear and this was our last example for this video thank you for watching see you next time